Hello class, it is my hope that you have stayed safe as always instructed by the Ministry of Health. Keep it faithful that very soon this pandemic shall be defeated and you will continue with your studies, always wishing you the best. This is your teacher Robert Ntai and I am here to revise with you English Paper 1 the Erudite KCSE Evaluation Series, an exam that was sent to you via WhatsApp a few days ago and I hope that you have been able to do and send the photographs of your answers for marking which will be shared in your inboxes soon. Let's continue with our revision. The first question is functional skills, 20 marks. And it says, the Secretary General of Trade Unions is visiting your village for a meeting with local farmers. Imagine you are the communications officer in your county and write a letter to the chief medical officer to come and address the farmers on importance of National Hospital Insurance Fund and HIF. Ensure that your letter is convincing to the addressee, 10 months. So what are you supposed to do here? You are expected to write a formal invitation letter. A formal letter contains two addresses and adopts a formal tone. And this is the example of what you are supposed to write. The first address, which is your address as the communication officer according to the question. Communication officer, Baringo County, PO Box 001, dash, which is code now, 30302. Next. And then you jump one line and write down the date, 20th August 2020, jump one line and then you write down the address of the recipient, the Chief Medical Officer, Nakuru County Referral Hospital, PO Box 001-10202, Nakuru. And then you jump one line. And then you write down the salutation. Dear Madam, I have chosen to write to a Madam. So, I don't know, you may have chosen to write to a dear sir, or you may have given a name of the recipient. But this is just an example. Dear Madam, comma, jump one line, and then you write down the subject beginning with RE, colon, and then you write down the subject in capital letters, and then you underline it. Invitation to give a talk on NHIF. And then the first paragraph. Before you write down the first paragraph, you jump one line. And then you proceed. On behalf of the government and the people of Baringo County, it is my pleasure to invite you to the 10th Agricultural Meeting at Cabartonjo Girls Secondary School Playground on 25th August 2020. You are invited to give a talk to farmers on importance of National Hospital Insurance Fund and HIF. And then you go to the second paragraph, so you jump one line and continue. Baringo County is a fertile region and many people rely on agriculture for income. However, many farmers fail to prosper due to lack of information on medical insurance, your speech will help many of them to understand the importance of NHIF or National Hospital Insurance Fund to wealth generation. And then you jump online and write the next paragraph. I do hope you will be able to confirm your attendance to this important function through baringocounty at gmail.com or 0700000. Your presence at this big day will be highly appreciated. And then you jump one line and write yours sincerely, jump one line, sign, jump one line, and write down your name, Colin Smith. And then you write a dash in front of your name and give your position in capital letters Communications Officer Baringo County. To question number 1B, 
which is going to account for the 10 marks to make it 20. And it reads, imagine you are the chief medical officer and you will not be able to attend the meeting. Write an apology to the communications officer informing him of your absence during the function 10 marks. This again calls for a formal letter of apology. A letter of apology is always written in a formal format. So you write, Chief Medical Officer, Nakuru County Referral Hospital, PO Box 001-102020, Nakuru. And then you jump one line and write down the date. It can be the same date or a date later than the one written in the letter of invitation. In this case, I've used 22nd August 2020. And then you give the address of the recipient, Communications Officer, Baringo County, PO Box 001-30302, Cabernet. And then you jump one line and give the salutation. In this case, I have decided to use Dear Sir. And then you jump one line and write the subject, RE Apology for Inability to Speak on NHIF. And then you jump one line Thanks for inviting me to address your farmers on National Hospital Insurance Fund. The next paragraph, you jump one line. I regret to inform you that I will not be able to attend the function due to prior commitments. Full stop. And then you go to the next paragraph, jump a line and say, I can send my assistant if that is acceptable to you. Full stop jump one line and then you end by apologizing again you say i am sincerely sorry for any inconveniences caused full stop jump one line and write yours sincerely which is signing off yours sincerely jump a space sign and then jump another space and write amanda Liz, hyphen chief medical officer nakuru county referral hospital that should give you something like 10 marks. Section B, close test, 10 marks. It says, read the passage below and fill in each blank space with the most appropriate word. Now, this is the close test without the answers, and then I will provide the answers as we read through it. The Kenyan dash has been hit by yet dash loss. Full stop. Coronavirus has forced President Uhuru Kenyatta to dash down budgets of other government utilities in dash to meet the rising dash of feeding patients in quarantine dash full stop. The Minister for Health Mutahi Kagwe is yet to dash official figures of those dash have succumbed to the virus. He insists that the dash remains a big dash to Kenya's economy. So let us read again with the answers. I hope that you're also reading yours and find out if it is as interesting as possible as instructed. This is the closest with proper answers. Remember that in some occasions there will always be more than one word to fill the space that is given. The Kenyan government has been hit by yet another loss. Coronavirus has forced President Uhuru Kenyatta to cut down budgets of other government utilities in order to or in bid to meet the rising cost or expenditure of feeding patients in quarantine facilities. The Minister for Health Mutahi Kagwe is yet to announce or is yet to reveal or is yet to release official figures of those who have succumbed to the virus. He insists that the pandemic or the virus or the disease remains a big threat or a big challenge to Kenya's economy. That should give you 10 marks. Remember that the secret to success in answering a closest question is to put yourself in contexts where proper English is always used.
So read a lot of English texts, read newspapers, read magazines, read storybooks, and also read your notes, but the ones that you've been given by your teachers in school, because most of your subjects are taught in English. Section 3 that contains three sections. So the first section says, read the oral poem below and answer questions that follow. And here is an oral poem, Death is a Witch. The psalmist says, aha, what shall I do, Abaluya? It is wrong, chorus. Today I will say, death is a witch, my people. It snatched my child, I remain alone, solo. Aha, what shall I really do, Abaluya? It is very wrong, chorus. Today I will say, death is a witch, my people, it snatched my child, I will read alone, solo. Aha, what shall I really do, Abaluya? It is wrong. Chorus, today I will say, death is a witch, my people, it snatched my child, I will dance alone, solo. My child, my friend, I cry, what shall I do? I cry, what shall I do? I cry, I cry. So that is the oral poem entitled Death is a Witch. And then the first question classified the above oral poem giving reasons. So what kind of an oral poem is this? You can't again say it's an oral poem. The question is what kind of an oral poem is it? This one is an oral poem or an oral song that is called a funeral song. So the right answer here is to say it is a funeral song otherwise known as a dirge or an elegy because it mourns the death of a child. Question number B. Who is the persona? And illustrate your answer. Persona is the voice in the poem. Persona is not the writer of the poem. For example, in the novel The Pearl, The Pearl has been written by John Steinbeck, but we have characters there that have been used to narrate the story. So whoever has been used to narrate a story in a poem is the persona, not the writer. So the persona is the voice in the poem. We have a voice of a person who is complaining about death that has taken away a child. Let's look at the words of the soloist in the last stanza. My child, my friend, I cry, what shall I do? I cry, what shall I do? I cry, I cry. The persona says, my child, and therefore the persona is a parent. Again, if you look at stanza number four and line number four, it says, I will weed alone, therefore the persona can also be said to be a farmer. So whether you say it's a parent or a farmer and illustrated as stated, then you get your two marks. Question number C. What is the persona's attitude towards death? When you talk about attitude, we are talking about expression of a feeling. How are feelings expressed by the voice in this poem? The voice in the poem is sad because it talks about death and even calling death a witch. When a person calls you a witch, the person is contemptuous or condemning you for doing a bad thing. Therefore, the attitude is bitter. The attitude is sad. We can also say sadistic. The attitude here is contemptuous. The second and the third lines of the chorus, it says that death is a witch. It's not that way, my child. So the attitude here is bitter. The attitude is sad. Question number D. What is lost when this song is written down? Use suitable illustrations from the song to support your answer. Now, this is an oral poem received as presented or as performed. And when you're pro for something is being performed, we have the benefit of tonal variation or the voice fluctuation, the benefits of stress and intonation, and also we have the benefits of rhythm and rhyme, the benefits of body language, the sign language, the gestures. So w when this poem is written down first, we know obviously that we will lose repetition. We will also lose the arrangement of lines or the verses that gives it the rhythm that makes it to become musical. So that is actually what will be lost when this song is written down. And then in question number E it says, provide another word that is pronounced as the following as used in the oral poem. In number E, Roman number one, we have will, W-I-L-L, -L, will, will. So the word that is pronounced exactly the same as will is wheel, the tire of a vehicle, W-H-E-E-L. Roman number two and number E, which, W-I-T-C-H, which to mean a wizard or a sorcerer or a sorceress. The word that is pronounced 
exactly the same as which is the interrogative pronoun WHICH which. Roman number three under number E, death, death, the loss of life. We have two words. We have D E A R T H, which is death, and we also have death, D E P T H. And then we have the last question under number E, which is I, the single letter word I. The word that is pronounced exactly as I is I. A Y E. E Y E. Question number F. Identify and illustrate two poetic devices used in the poem. We have many, many poetic devices, but in this poem we have repetition as in the chorus, and that one is a poetic device. It generates rhythm when we repeat the same, same words uh, successively, we generate rhythm. And then also we have uh, personification as a poetic device. Death has been given the attributes of a human being, that death is a witch. So that one is personification. Now giving illustrations, personification is contained in or the second line of the chorus. We have personification. It says death is a witch. Rhetoric question, what shall I do? Abaluya. That is the soloist, the first line of the soloist, what shall I do? Abaluya. Who will read with me? Who will dance with me? Those are rhetoric questions contained in this poem. Repetition, the chorus has been repeated. In the first line of the first three stanzas of the soloist, the stanzas are repeated. And then the next question, identify one character trait of death in this poem. Now, death is cruel because in chorus line three, it says it snatched a child from its parent. So that is a character trait or an illustration of death as cruel. Also death is sadistic. Something that is sadistic is something that is evil, something that brings sadness, something that hurts or kills a person or impoverishes a person or brings a great loss to a person is said to be sadistic. So that is the next character trait of death. Kills a child, steals life from an innocent child. If you look at chorus, the second and the third line of all the choruses. In question number H, with illustrations, identify socio-economic activities of the community from which this song is drawn. Now, if you look at this oral poem very well, the persona is complaining about the loss of a child. And some of the losses that this person has incurred, or the persona has incurred, is lack of a companion during weeding. We do weeding when we do farming. We do farming to survive. We do farming to provide food and sometimes also to provide a product for the market. The, the socio-economic activity of the people from which this oral poem is drawn is farming, crop farming, because we don't weed cows, we weed plants. So it is crop farming or you can just say farming. Second chorus line number four, who will weed with me? I hope you are keeping me company and you're paying attention. Remember that you can always pause this video, take up other responsibilities, and you can always resume whenever necessary. That is the importance of virtual education, the importance of digital learning. Let's consider section B of oral skills. Consider the following genome. Wale wanawali waliwalia wali walawali. Again, wale wanawali waliwalia wali walawali. The English translation reads, in brackets, Those young girls eat rice eat as rice. Question number one. Classify the above genre. Because of the repetition of similar sounds, this is a tongue twister. It is a tongue twister because we have successive repetition of similar sounds in the words. We have repetition of wa in almost all the words of this line and also we have repetition of the word wali 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 so it is a tongue twister question number two identify and illustrate one feature of sound in the above genre of course it is only asking for one feature of sound but we have many features of sounds we have alliteration for example remember that alliteration is the repetition of the initial consonant sound the initial consonant sound in the words successively in a line. 
in this entire line we have the initial sound woo, repeated in all the words of this tongue twister and then we have assonance assonance is successive repetition of the similar vowel sound so we have the vowel sound a a a a repeated in all the words and then we have consonants consonants is repetition of a consonant sound in the middle or the end of words successively in a line so we have repetition of the consonant sound l, 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 l or l, 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 l in the middle in the middle positions of all the words except the second word of this tongue twister we have the element of repetition which is a sound device as well we have repetition of wali 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 the next question explain what is lost if the above item is translated from its original language if this tongue twister is translated from this original swahili language to any other language we will lose the repetition of the similar sounds now look at the translation in english in brackets it does not contain successive repetition of sounds now when we lose successive repetition of similar sounds it fails to be a tongue twister when it fails to be a tongue twister it fails to perform the function or the purpose that tongue twisters are supposed to bring out as indicated also in the next question it says give one roll of the above gina a tongue twister is normally used among children it's one of the many short forms of oral literature forms or types and it is used to train children to master proper pronunciation the user is expected to pronounce them quickly in succession without repeating then therefore the person is going to master the art of distinguishing the various sounds that are used in a language therefore it is used to train linguistic competence among its users particularly in children now the other role of a tongue twister or this gina is it is used for entertainment when you ask a person to pronounce a tongue twister and they're not able to pronounce it as expected it generates a comic effect you know it elicits joy and people begin to laugh and therefore it is a play activity it, it's like a game therefore it is something that brings joy it is used for entertainment also a tongue twister in this case is used for what you call social integrations where children come together and begin to outdo each other in proper pronunciation of a tongue twister then the aspect of mingling together and doing a similar thing together laughing together sometimes smoking one another promotes mutual coexistence among its users in the community section number c which is the last section in our revision here number c it says read the following story and answer the questions that follow the title of this story is the warrior who had eight lovers it begins a long time ago there was a warrior whose bravery and handsome looks made the girls of the village fall in love with him so i want to believe that you read the story if you haven't you are free to pause this video and then read the story first and then you can catch up with the rest of the revision the first question what kind of a narrative is this illustrate your answer now many students love to say it's an oral narrative of course it is an oral narrative you've been told to read the oral narrative but what kind of oral narrative from your form one from two from three and form four uh, lessons and revisions and the many works that you've gone through and many other exams by now as a form four student you are supposed to understand that there are categories or types of oral narrative so you don't just say it's an oral narrative this narrative here is a dilemma narrative why is it a dilemma narrative it is a dilemma narrative because the father is in a dilemma he cannot decide whether to conduct burial rites or continue waiting for the return of his son in paragraph number eight it says back at home everybody thought that the young woman and her lover were dead and they insisted that their death rites be performed however the father of the warrior kept postponing the death rites 
But at last the old man agreed to perform the rites because his youngest son was to be circumcised and could not be circumcised because the rites were not yet performed. So preparations for the death rites for the lost warrior were made. But on the morning of the day that the rites were to be performed, and as people were gathering, one of them in the gathering heard a war song coming from the other side of the valley. He asked other people to listen. The father of the warrior could not mistake his son's voice. He was almost crying as he gazed on the other side of the valley. The singing voice became clearer and before long the warrior and his lover emerged driving a large herd of cattle. The bells that were tied around the necks of the, uh, of the oxen played to the tune of the war song. So the father cannot actually decide whether to continue waiting for the, his son or perform the body rites to pave way for circumcision of his younger son. So this one is an, a dilemma narrative. Always read and read the story to get the correct answer. Now in question number two, identify two elements of oral narratives in the story. We have the opening formula. This story begins with a long time ago. The first line of the first paragraph, a long time ago. Now we are also told to give examples the opening formula a long time ago in the first line of the first paragraph and this one serves to transport the audiences from the world of reality to the world of fantasy or the world of imagination the storytelling world and then also we have the closing formula we are told to identify two and there must my story ends if you look at the last line of the last paragraph it says and my story ends that is a closing formula closing formula we are told that it serves to signal the end of a story and also paves way for the coming of another story and you've also been told that it serves to transport the audiences back from the world of fantasy or imagination back to the real world. We also have in paragraph number six we have the use of songs. Now in paragraph number six according to this story it says on the ninth day the girl sang louder and louder as she traveled therefore we are told each time she sang, she would listen to hear if there was any reply. So the use of a song in the story is an element of oral narrative. And then also we have the use of repetition. We are told in paragraph number six, she sang louder and louder. And also use of fantasy. In paragraph number four, we are told that the milk began to turn red. We all know that milk comes from a cow, a healthy cow with the color white and under no circumstance will it turn red by itself unless it is added with blood or anything red but the milk does not begin to turn red alone so this is a feature of oral narrative to force the meaning to work for the other or to work for its users and then also a uh, number three what are the character traits of the youngest lover the youngest lover is daring she decides to depart from home as a young woman to go into the dangerous forest looking for her husband. Again, she is loving. If you look at paragraph number three, the story says the young girl was so touched by the departure of a lover that she composed the song for him. So it was out of love that she began to compose a song for him. And this is the song she uses again to search or in search of a husband lost in the forest. She is caring because she nurses the wounds of a sick lover until he recovers, that is in paragraph number seven. And also we are told that she is patient and even she is persevering. It takes perseverance and patience to wait for a person for an indefinite time for that person to heal. And also she waited painstakingly, searched for food, did the work of a hunter, killed a deer, roasted the meat, and fed it to her husband until he was able to recover. She is also sensitive or perceptive because she perceives that the, something could be wrong and she begins checking the milk. And every time she walks looking for her husband, she keeps checking the milk and she notices that the milk is turning from red to even more red. Therefore, that is an element of sensitivity, a trait of perceptiveness on the part of the young lover. What is the function of a long time ago in the story? A long time ago is an opening formula that serves to introduce the audiences into the world of fantasy. And then finally, what is the economic activity of this community? The economic activity is 
an activity or a work that people do in order to raise income or generate income for a living, for sustenance. This is a community that relies on cattle raiding. So this is an, a community that keeps cattle for economic purposes. So the economic activity here, you can say cattle rearing, cattle keeping or pastoralism. Thank you for keeping me company. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your attention. On behalf of the principal of Chiberan Secondary School, Mr. Felix Kito, all the teachers and particularly the head of department, Mr. David Wendot, the senior teachers in the Department of English and Linguistics, Madams Cynthia Minor and Eunice Kibor. I've been your teacher, Robert Mutan. Until next time, continue doing paper two. Make sure that you send your answers in time for the second revision. God bless you. Stay safe, sanitize, put on your mask, maintain social distance, and always stay at home until it is safe for us to meet together. Bye-bye.